welcome to the Anvil Industry video guide to using your LightMac files. This video guide goes alongside the written documentation which we strongly recommend you also read before starting to use your files. When you open your download you should see this. We've got the Blender file assemblers for construction. We have separate supported STLs and we have a couple of pre-posed rifle arms. We're going to talk first about making the simple version of the mech, which requires very minimal use of Blender. You don't need to do any sort of posing of the legs. We can use the pre-supported components. Now those components look like this. So we have the hip socket. We have two hip balls, which allow full rotation. We've got the feet, which clip onto the bottom of the legs with a, a ball joint. And then we have three legs. We've got compact, neutral, and extended. And this is exactly how they import in STL format. They're all pre-supported. And I've created a version of them in Blender just to show you what you can do with them. So you'll print them separately, um, but you can use them to make a very wide variety of poses because of the way you just clip them onto the ball joints. So you can decide on your exact pose in real life. So this is two copies of the neutral leg. And we've also got the optional shin armor shown at the bottom here. If you print for example, a compact leg, then you can create a variety of walking and stepping poses. This leg does not have the shin armor mounted. Or alternatively, the extended leg, if I make that visible, gives you a, a wider range of more dynamic sort of running, jumping and leaping poses. Or you could also use a couple of the extended or the compact legs to make a shorter or taller stance of mech. So once you've imported your leg files into Chitubox like this, you'll need to duplicate and mirror a couple of components. So firstly, if you're using the armor, you'll need to duplicate that using the clone button up here. You'll always need two hip components. over there. Now, if we're going to use, say, two neutral legs, then I'm going to just get rid of these other ones, and I'm going to duplicate this component with the clone and then I'm going to use the uh, mirror function so over here is mirror X mirror and that now gives you the max right leg and I'm going to overlap the two legs with their supports and that makes it a little bit stronger so you have one hip piece a right and a left leg two hip joints two bits of armor and then the foot again we're going to um, clone and mirror in the x-axis and now you have your left and right feet you can also get a version of the foot pre-supported where the toes are bent which is suitable for use with running poses and there you have it that's your leg parts ready to print and once you've printed them and removed the supports which is relatively straightforward you can push click the legs onto the hip joints the hip joints then rotate in the waist and the feet also rotate on the ball sockets it all holds together quite nicely without glue, so you've got plenty of opportunity to pick the exact pose that you want to go for. When you first open a .blend file, it will look something like this. You'll have your objects in the middle of the viewport and your list of objects with their names to the right-hand side. To manipulate the view, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can hold the scroll wheel or middle mouse button to rotate the scene. And you can use shift, shift and middle mouse button to pan left and right. You can also move your view by clicking on these axis buttons at the top to lock the view to a certain perspective. And you can do the same thing using 1, 3 and 7 on the numpad. The most important thing to draw your attention to is to the right of each object is an eye symbol, a visibility toggle. And you can use this to turn an object on and off. To select an object, you can click it, which will highlight it as selected in the list of objects on the right. You can hold Shift to select several objects. You can press A on the keyboard twice to deselect everything, and you can press it once to select everything which is currently visible. And that's something that we'll use extensively to customize and export just the components of the mech that we want to use. To export your Mech Torso, you're going to open Mech Torso Assembler 2, which looks like this. The simplest options are already 
pre-toggled visible. So if you export it exactly like this by pressing A to select everything, file, export, STL, we're going to call this test torso one. And you've got to make sure that this selection only toggle is on. Export STL. And you can then import that. Test torso one. And that torso with the glass sides can be combined with separate sported STLs, roll cage hatch glass, and low tech front hatch. So this is the top hatch and the front hatch which go with that torso to make a complete unit where you won't need to model or paint the inside. You can customize by adding an armored top. So under low tech roll cage, you have low tech armored front. And if you toggle that, then that overlaps with the roll cage and gives you an armored front. To print a mono block torso with no interior detailing, you have to also activate either front window glass or low tech armored front hatch. You then have the option of activating low tech armored sides, which is here. And if you do that, then you can either leave the hatches not in place or you can switch on the left and right hatch. And this will then need a top hatch, which is the armored top hatch. You've also got the option of using the armored sides, but not the armored front. So if you turn off the armored front options, then you can combine the armored sides with the glass top cover. So if we select everything by pressing A with these objects turned on, you'll notice that it selected all of the armor components as well. And we then go file, export, STL. We're gonna call this one test torso two check that selection only is on, export, and now if we import that file, then it's a mono print with the armored options. And to complete this, we then also need to import from separate sport STLs, the front hatch and the armored top hatch. So are these components here? And that is the simplest way to prepare a customized torso for your Mac. The process for printing a monoblock high-tech canopy torso is similar. We're going to start by switching off low-tech roll cage. And then above that, we're going to switch on high-tech canopy. And that includes some internal supports, which we'll need to remove with clippers. You export this exactly as shown. So that's test torso three. So we're going to import that into Digibox. And then for the high tech canopy to complete the mono print, we're going to open the high tech canopy front and the high tech front hatch and you also need a high tech head and there's a choice of two so this is the front hatch which goes in these pins here and then you have a choice of two heads and a high tech front hatch which goes on the belly To create a rifle for your mech, the process is very similar to the torso, but there are a lot more options. There are over 1,500 combinations of parts. When you open Mech Rifle Assembler 2, it will look something like this. So I've already prepared it with a number of options made visible. To export, again, we'll press A and that will select everything which is visible. And then the process for exporting is the same as the torso. On the right, you have all of your different options. So we've got ammo, which is the element here. So at the moment, medium caliber rounds is on. I'm going to turn that off and I've got modern shoot speed, power lines, large caliber shells. After ammo, you come down to the barrel. So at the moment I have the tri active. I'm going to switch that off 
and activate the ion rifle or the auto cannon. If you activate the seven barrel rotary cannon, then you can also add a flash hider. You have a choice of a modern Avenger style flash hider or a 70s minigun style banding. And if you're not using the minigun, then don't use those options. After the barrel options on the right here, we have the body. So you have a number of components which I recommend you leave on if you're exporting a weapon for your mech, but you can switch some of these options off. So for example, we have hand, foregrip and pistol grip. You can turn the hand off and the weapon will still print without the hands just fine. Once, assuming you're printing for your mech, then you're gonna leave your hands on. You have a choice of handguard. So modern enclose is the default, but I can switch that off and select a different one. If you have a hand, then you have to have a hand guard or it won't come out properly. You then got your mag, so box is default, but I'm gonna switch that off and activate the drum or the ion cell or the pod. Now you notice that as you activate the different mags, the supports also change automatically. So whichever options you select, it will always export with pre-supports which work. Mag ammo coupler has to always be on. And then you have a choice of top rails. We've got Picatinny is the default, but you've also got high tech with a sight or some slightly more old school iron sights. And finally a compact rail. You can of course switch those options off entirely. The stock is located here and it prints separately and is then glued on with a little attachment peg. Compensator coil is the default, but you can replace that with the modern collapsing stock. So once you've chosen all of your options, you press A to select everything which is visible. Double check that nothing's visible that isn't meant to be there and then export. So I'm gonna go file, export, STL, and I'm gonna save this as mech rifle one. Again, check that the selection only box is ticked and export STL. When you import the weapon into Chichibox, because of the way it has to be oriented in Blender, you'll need to rotate it. So we're gonna import mech rifle one. And the simplest way to do this is select the object, click on rotate, click flatten by face and click on the bottom. And then you can move it to anywhere in here. I'm gonna get rid of this torso because we need to make room for our arms. File import, you have a choice of mech rifle arms, neutral or shooting. I'm gonna import neutral. And there you have all of the components required to print and assemble a mech. An alternative option, if you do not want to build a mech with arms, is to export the weapon as a direct mount, which will then fit on the direct mount shoulder joint. To do this, we're going to switch off the hands. We're going to switch off the three body components on the right here. We're going to switch off our stock and you're left with just the barrel and ammunition. Now you could also switch off the hand guard, but you don't have to. We're then going to activate direct mount weapon body, which is a different weapon um, body component, which is designed to work with the shoulder joint with this peg here. And then you've got the option of also activating the weapon armor, which goes over the top and that overlaps and that's optional. Once you have it like this, then the process is the same. We're going to export STL mech rifle direct mount selection only. And then in Chichi Box, we'll get rid of our rifle with hands and our arms. We're going to import mech rifle direct mount. And again, we're going to rotate. And then we're also going to import from the torso new high tech parts. We have direct weapon shoulder mount. And there's actually two, there's one with armor and one without. And these components are shoulder joints, which have the mount for the weapon on the side of the torso. 
these are the right hand side so to create a left hand side version we would again duplicate and mirror and let's get rid of that one and we'll use the unarmed version and we're going to duplicate or clone and mirror so now you have components to make a mech with an awful lot of firepower you can of course use different weapons on either side and there's also an option for a secondary weapon searchlight which can either be a light and a sensor pod or a light and a smaller version of the auto cannon barrel if you want a mech with just a single heavy weapon We're now going to talk about one of the advanced options, which is printing your mech torso in separate components. The reason you'd want to do this is if you want to model and paint the pilot and the interior detail, which gives you a lot of flexibility to make a very cool model, but it does mean you have to print it separately to be able to get a brush into all of these little areas. So the first thing we're going to do is switch off the low-tech roll cage and any of the other top elements, and we're going to switch off the object called one block print which consists of the side walls and some extra supports. So we're going to do two exports for a low-tech mech torso. We're going to export the pilot and seat first. So we're going to turn on pilot legs, we're going to turn on pilot torso, and we're going to turn on pilot left arm, and the right arm which works with high-tech canopy. There's also a right arm which is higher, which only works with a low-tech canopy. Once you've made visible any pilot parts that you want to use or imported other STLs from other Digital Forge months to make a different pilot, we're going to select all and we're going to export this as separate torso base. And again, with selection only on, we're going to export STL. Now the second export we're going to switch off the pilot parts. We're going to switch off torso base and torso base supports. And we're going to switch on roll cage supports. We're then also going to switch on low tech roll cage. And from this point, the options are the same as if you're printing a monoblock torso. But because we're printing it separately, you don't have to print the glass. So you can print the hatches and the armoured sides with these bars allowing you to see into the cockpit or you could print say just an armoured front like that. We're going to select all once we've picked the options that we want. I'll show you one more thing, you can also activate the hatches and if you turn on the hatches and click on them you can use this gimbal to rotate them and so long as you rotate them to the right angle so that's relative to this plane which is the floor it needs to be at more than a 45 degree angle so at least that steep and these side ones you can also open them and you can then print them as a single object with the torso and they should print okay uh, if you want an easy life then don't print them you could also print them separately if you add some supports Again, once we've got all of our options, we're going to press A to select everything. And we're going to hit export. And this is going to be separate torso low tech export. Come back into Chitty Box. So we'll delete the other torso. And then open file. We've got our separate torso base and separate torso low tech. And the pilot will print exactly as it imports like that with no extra supports needed. The top section, because of the way it has to be orientated in Blender, then again, much like the gun, we're going to come over here to rotate. We're going to click on flatten by face and we're going to click on any part of the base. And that will then flatten that and that will now print with those supports with no extra support needed. So the other elements you'll need, you'll need to come in here, you need to come to separate supported STL torsos, and you'll need to print mech torso right side. And we're also
going to print a mirror copy. So again, we're going to use the clone current model and then mirror in X. And that gives you the two sides of the mech, the seat with the pilot and the top section. And then you've got your armored hatch as well, which depends on which one you're building. So that's how you separate the components and print them for painting and modeling the inside. The process for exporting and printing the separate parts of a high-tech canopy torso is similar. So you've exported the pilot with the two lower arms, which won't clash with the canopy when it's closed. You've got the two sides, one of which is mirrored, and you have the high-tech front hatch. It also works with the low-tech hatch. You have a choice of two different heads, which um, push fit onto this ball joint inside the front hatch. And this is the high-tech canopy front and high-tech canopy back. And you've also got the fusion reactor, or you can use the low-tech reactor. These two elements here, the antennae and sensor, go into the small mounting hole on top of the torso, or you could also put any other accessory on there. We're now going to look at how you can use mech arms fully rigged and mech legs fully rigged to create custom poses. We'll look at the arms first because it's slightly simpler. So when you open the file, it looks like this. You've got a rifle posing blob and torso blob. Those aren't to be printed, they're just to help with posing. When you click on a component, you'll notice that this gimbal appears with circles which allow you to click and drag to rotate in different axes. And those are all locked to the correct center of rotation for the way in which the mech's mechanical components would work. And that allows you to get realistic poses. So we're going to start at the top with the shoulder joint. Different components can only be rotated in certain colored axes in order for it to carry on looking correct. So the shoulder ball can only rotate on the red axis. The next upper arm can't rotate on the red axis because that would interfere with the shoulder. So this one rotates a little bit on the blue one and as much as you like on the green one. You can also select the shoulder separately and rotate that independently from the upper arm. Once you've got your upper arm pose, you move down to the lower bicep and this one is allows you to rotate the arm outwards and inwards using the blue circle. So we'll start by rotating in the red axis, the forearm, and then you can see more easily, if we go back to the bicep, you can turn the arm outwards and inwards. And finally, the wrist joint can be rotated in the red axis, and that allows certain hand poses to become slightly easier. All of the parts are linked to one another, and you can make adjustments to any part, and any parts which it's connected to will move at the same time. So I can rotate the forearm, I can go back to the shoulder joint, and I can then rotate that, and the movement of the forearm will remain correct. So it's a process of trial and error, and gradually moving parts in the correct axes until you get the exact pose that you're looking for. The rifle blob is connected to this hand, and these hands are in the same position as the rifle hands in the mech rifle builder. So if you did want to make another rifle pose, you can do so using this. So I can grab that with the G key. You can, uh, the G key allows you to move any component. You just click, tap, tap G, move and click, uh, control Z to undo. I can rotate this hand and you can see the other hand and the gun are linked to it. So I can use a combination of G and rotate. And then if I wanted to start making another rifle pose, I'd start with the shoulder join might rotate that a little bit. I move down to the next bit and I'll rotate that out. I'm going to bring the forearm up and then I'm going to bring the bicep in. Depending on your view, it's easier to rotate different angles. And if you move the mouse key further away, you get more control. So that's looking like I need to come back up to the shoulder joint and rotate around a little bit more. And then with the one key, I'm going to view from the front, click this hand, click G, press G, and then I can move that and start overlapping it. And you can print the rifle separately and just print the arms in your new rifle pose and then glue it together as, as printed components. 
the rifle arms are by far the most difficult, so that's why I've done two pre-supported rifle arm poses. Uh, melee poses, where you don't have to connect two arms to the same object, are quite a lot easier. There is also a fully posable hand, so I'm just going to use the G key, having clicked on the hand base, to move that to the front so we can see what we're doing. And each of these finger joints is individually linked in the same way. So you can rotate the tip of the finger, you can rotate the tip of the next finger, you can rotate that finger, and for the, you can also rotate them out a bit like this. So I'm going to grab this bottom one and rotate that out. And the thumb can be fully rotated in any angle. So with a bit of patience, you can make virtually any hand pose you like. Pressing one to lock to front view, and then I'm going to click the center of the hand and use the G key to move it down to here. And then I'm going to use these rotation arrows to start moving it. And I'm, if you wanted to, you could print the hand separately by adding supports, but you could also merge it in with an arm. So you can view it from different angles and use the G key. And you want to make sure that it overlaps solidly so that you get a nice solid connection when it's printing rather than there being gaps. So it's a, again, it's trial and error, move it, adjust the view, move it somewhere else. And there you have quite quickly an arm with a hand. So that is how you can pose the arms. When you want to export an arm which you have posed, you can select all the components by using the shift key and clicking on them, but that's a bit of a pain with fingers. So the better way to do it is to use the B key to draw a box around everything that you want to select. You can then use G and grab it just to check, and then you export that in exactly the same way as you would a gun or a torso, and then you'll need to add separate supports. We're now going to look at how to use mech legs fully rigged dot blend. The legs have more degrees of rotation and some more components, so they're slightly more complex, but the basic principle is the same as the arms. You've got your hip joint in the middle, which we recommend you print separately. I'll come on to that a bit later. The process for moving the legs. Again, we're going to start at the top. You have a hip, which rotates in the red axis only. You have a thigh, which can rotate a little bit in the blue on the ball socket, but not too much, or it clashes with the hips. And then it can rotate as much as you like in the green. And again, I'm using Control-Z to undo. Or if you've done a rotation, you can go up here to Item, and you can find the rotation Y15, put that back to zero, Enter, and it will reset it. After the thigh, you have the armor on the knee, which can be deleted or it can rotate independently. And then you have the calf bone, which rotates only in the red. And you've got a fairly large degree of rotation. And then the next part of the leg, the shin also rotates, and that's linked to the ankle. The ankle rotates around this point here so if you've got the leg particularly far back or particularly far forward, moving the ankle like this will allow you to get a more natural foot position. If you hold shift while you're making these movements, you have a much, much finer degree of control. The foot can obviously rotate in the red axis, but it can also rotate in any of the other axes. You have complete freedom. And you can also rotate the toe and the red axis separately a little bit. Now, one thing that makes the legs a little bit more complicated is that the legs are connected in certain places with these rams, which are separate and need to be moved separately. So once you finalize the position of your leg components, you need to move the rams. So First of all, I'm going to have to move this inner RAM element until it lines up with the connection point. And then if you need to, you can also grab the back of it. And again, I'm going to use the shift key. Nope, that's the wrong one. Red. 
and I'm going to use the shift key and make sure that that RAM lines up with the connection point correctly. You can also use these blue arrows to move something back and forth. Sorry, that wasn't clear. And you can sort of see semi-transparently where the RAM is located. Coming down here, because I've rotated this back, I need to use the blue arrow to compress this RAM ever so slightly. I don't really need to rotate it. Uh, if I then was to grab this and rotate it, really far like this because I was grabbing the hip joint and rotating the whole leg back into a very extreme walking forward position like a lunge almost then at this point you'd grab this grab the blue arrow extend the ram to almost as far as it will go and then grab this and rotate and that's actually slightly further than the ram would be physically capable of but it doesn't matter but if I move that back to about there and then move that so finalize the position of your ankle and your mid joint first and then move your rams once you finalize the pose. And then obviously the other leg is similar. Now, obviously, if you want to, you can construct a complete pose using this file. And you can hit A to select everything and you can export it exactly like this and then you can add your support separately. That is possible, but it will involve a lot of removing supports. Uh, so my recommendation is that you use this as a planning tool. You can see there where I've moved the leg. And I'm going to leave this in the recording because it's an example of something you can do wrong. So I moved this leg, but I didn't move the hip and I should have moved the hip. So I'm going to go back with Control Z. I'm going to get back to here and instead of doing this, I'm going to grab this one and move that. That's the one you need to use for that rotation. So as I was saying, once you've finalized your pose, you can export the whole thing like this and add supports. Um, my recommendation, however, is that you separate out your feet, um, separate your hips, print those separately in the same way that you would for printing the separate pre-supported legs. And then once you've got your legs, we're going to use B to select a whole leg, uh, three to move the view. I'm going to grab that out of the way. And then look at your leg. And if your leg is similar to one of the pre-supported legs, then you might consider using the pre-supported leg because it will save you time. Or alternatively, um, the best thing to do is export. You just get rid of the hip ball, print that separately. So I'm going to just delete that. No, nope, that doesn't work. You can't delete that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these components here. I've not done this before, so I'm learning as we go. And I'm going to press Control D to duplicate. And I've now got a copy of the leg, which will work with the pre-supported feet and the pre-supported hip balls. And I can support this in the slicer program. And that will then allow me to assemble it in real life and assembly in real life it's going to make it easier to get a perfect natural pose um, if you've taken your leg and you've rotated it sideways then to add the supports you're going to want to come up here to rotation and you're going to want to zero the rotations for that top component and that will then make sure that it's lined up and you want to have the thigh upright and that will probably give you the optimum angle for adding supports so I select all of this and I then export that as my leg and then add supports and that will ensure that the print lines are optimized the whole way up. So those are your two options. You can either pose the legs and then export the whole pose or you can separate out the legs and then combine your pre-posed legs with the separate pre-supported waist, hip ball and feet. Lastly, we're going to go over a few more advanced options involving splitting and joining shells. This will be useful for removing certain components and also for removing supports if you want to do a few different kit bash type things. So I'm going to start by importing an STL. You go File, Import, and we're going to let's use High Tech Canopy separate. So here is an example. This is an STL which you normally print separately. I'm going to press tab to enter edit mode. And now I'm going to press A twice to deselect everything. 
and in edit mode you can see you've got points or you can use edge selection or you can use face selection and you use this little arrow in the yellow box and you can select different bits you can also use the box select you won't normally need to use any of these tools but what you can do is you can press p and then you can separate by loose parts and what that's done is that separated this into all the separate shells so you can see you've got the support objects you've got these and then you've also got these two side gubbins so i can now use the g key and the y key to move them in the y axis out the way so you could for example overlap these gubbins with any other component you could put them on the shoulders you could you know scale them up put them on the arm mount them on the side of the backpack and then you could print this without those gubbins if you wanted to mount something different like a weapon on the side or a different sensor pod um, another thing you can do is if you want to remove supports I'm going to open mech rifle assembler and let's say I wanted to make a gun to go on the back of my mech and I want to print it a different way so I might press A to grab everything and then I'm going to hit control D which creates a duplicate sorry shift D and then if I hit control J what that does that joins it all into a single object you can see that's now all one mesh and if I go to edit mode again with tab you use tab to switch between the two and I press P and I can go by loose parts and I've now got all of my separate supports separated out so I'm now going to grab the different components which are part of the weapon Then I'm going to use the G key to move them out of the way, and I can see I've I've missed a couple of bits. So Control Z, and then click on those bits I've missed using the Shift key, and then G key again, and there you have a separate weapon. And I could now select the hands, use X to delete those, and now I could put that on the mech's hip, for example, um, as well as Control J to join and. Um, Control P to split if you wanted to select an individual component within an element you can um, open it up I don't actually have a good example here let's import the separate sporting STLs let's import the gas turbine power plant so this is a good example of where you've got some separate components if you press if you get lost and zoom in so I'm now going to go tab into edit mode I'm going to go P loose parts and then I can select these armor plates there's also a separate regulator and these things are separate so let's get rid of the armor plates and I could now if I wanted a simpler power plant I could use the box select all of this control J so you have to click on one to make it yellow control J and that's now one solid object and if I now export that then I've got a slightly more low-tech looking power plant or if I wanted to use this as a conversion piece, I could click on that, click on that single thing, uh, press L, and that selects all of the linked geometry. And then I can press P and selection. And I've now got just that gas turbine with none of the extra bits and none of the supports. So if I, if I wanted to stick that on another model, then that's how you do that. And one final thing I'm going to show you is if you're modding a mech and you want to do something the same on both sides, you can mirror a component. So this would be useful if you're modifying an arm or you're doing a pose and you've made a gun, you want to mirror it in Blender. So first thing you have to do is press Control C, uh, sorry, Shift C, and that will move the 3D cursor to the exact middle. And then if I right click on this, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, the middle of this file is now that point. And over here, you'll see a little blue spanner. Click on that that opens your modifiers tab modifier mirror and then mirror in the x-axis you can also mirror in the other axes but x is normally what you'll want because x is generally the front and then you click on this little arrow here and then click apply and if i now go into edit mode you can see you've got two copies of the geometry i'm going to go p separate by loose parts 
and now you've got two separate components. So if you had a component on the right side, that's how you'd mirror it to the left or to the right to make a, a duplicate. And one final thing while we're talking about advanced techniques, if I hit Shift A, click on Add Mesh Cube, and then I go Tab, and I go S for Scale, I'm going to move that to overlap with this object. I'm going to move it in that axis. So you can see that overlaps completely. And now I'm going to click on this gas turbine and I'm going to go to my modifiers tab. And this is called a Boolean. And this is useful for chopping and changing if you want to remove an element. Uh, this gets very complicated and needs a lot of practice. So I'm just showing you a very simple example. Click on Boolean. And I'm going to go for a difference Boolean, which is the standard one. I'm going to click on the little dropper tool and I'm going to select this cube. And after a few seconds, it will do the, the cutter operation. And I'm going to go apply. And now I delete this cube. And what you're left with now is I'm going to press L, P, selection. And now what I have here is just the gas turbine. So I could now add that to the leg or a shoulder or you know whatever else and you can use that technique to chop off any part of any part of the mech so there's a little little very very simple starter course on kit bashing and i'll do a more advanced guide at some point when i have time